this is Healing Through Experiences with Nicole, and today we are talking more healing, and today we're going to talk finances. A lot of people, especially in this day and age, are having a lot of problems with their finances, um, and it's mainly due to lack of financial education. We, a lot of times, were not taught because our parents or family didn't know themselves. So then we waddle through this world trying to figure out something. We might have learned in our in school how to balance a checkbook and maybe open a bank account, but that's it. We don't know what money can do. We don't know how to have a better relationship with money. Um, and so we're in the age of information. There's nothing that we can't find out. There's nothing that I can't find out. So. I went on my journey a couple of, maybe like four or five years ago, I think, maybe a little longer than it actually. And I actually, before I had a financial advisor, before I had any of those things, I spoke to someone who helped me figure out a budget and manage to see how much money was coming in and coming out and give myself an allowance and have cash. And that's all I could spend. I will definitely tell you, it gave me a really great platform that I always didn't follow, but I always had a platform. I created a spreadsheet. I went on these things so I could have a better relationship, but I still needed more help. So today I, we are talking to the man, the money man that has helped me get some things in place, policies in place, some understanding, more financial education. Um, I've had to start from the bottom once and I'm building back up again. So without further ado, I, we're going to talk to the person that I speak to. His name is Sean Drake. I like to call him Sir Drake. Um, and so he would call himself Master Drake, but <laughs> it is. nevertheless, we're going to have fun with this because Sean is a lot of fun. He's crazy and we have a great time and we chit chat and I, I learn a lot. So um, this is going to be a very blunt conversation. You might get your feelings hurt because I know I have a couple of times when speaking to him and utilizing the tools that he has given me, but it's good. It's good, Sean. Don't even, don't even trip um, because we need those kick in the pants, especially when we don't know something. But when we do know something, we have to do something better, you know? So without further ado, I'll let Sean introduce himself, tell him, tell, tell us who he is, what he does, how long he's does. And then he also, this is his own business. So he's also has that entrepreneurial side too that I love to tap into. So Sean, thank you so much for giving me your time and your energy and your wisdom. Talk no to the people. No doubt. Uh, thanks for having me this morning. It's, uh, it's definitely been a pleasure and it's actually been closer to seven years, my friend. Uh, then that means 10 years for me because prior to meeting you about 10 years uh, two yeah. years prior to that, I had started yeah. this. So. Time flies, man. Time Does. flies. That's how it goes. But um, yeah, I've, I've known Nicole now for, God, at least seven plus years. And um, when she was here in Jacksonville. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely been an amazing journey. So a um, little bit about myself. I'll, uh, I'll actually share my website, if that's okay. You know, all about shameless self-promotion here. So um, you can find me on uh, wealthwave.com forward slash Drake. Uh, the other website that you can find me on is howmoneyworks.com forward slash Drake. Two great websites there. Uh, I've been doing this for 15 years now. I just celebrated the 15 year anniversary of being in the financial industry this um, past Father's Day. Uh, wow. So, um, yeah, you know, you look up and you're like, wow, where'd the time go? But, uh, you know, that's what it is. So been in the industry 15 years. Uh, I'll you know, share with you a little bit about my credentials. I've, I've currently hold a life insurance and health insurance license. Uh, I can operate pretty much in all 50 states across the country. Uh, I also am a what's called a registered representative. So I hold a series six and 63 with FINRA. And I also uh, hold a series 65, which makes me a fiduciary and investment advisor representative. So just a little bit about uh, background and credentialing there. Um, to, to tell everyone just a little bit about how I operate, you know, one of, one of the biggest barriers to working with an advisor in the financial industry is really twofold. Um, number one, who do I trust? 
you know, there, there are so many horror stories that you hear about in the financial industry where somebody has been um, ripped off sometime on a small scale, um, or then you've got a large scale, you know, like your Bernie Madoffs of the world. And mm-hmm. so, you know, the, the first question is, how do I trust you? You know, how do I know you're not trying to rip me off or this isn't some deal, right? And so, um, you know, one of the first things that, that I teach is how to research a financial professional, how to, how to uh, protect yourself, which I'm going to talk about here in, in, in just a second. The second barrier to entry to working with a financial professional is usually means, you know, it's like, I want to do better with my money. I want to have more money. But a lot of times the financial industry is set up in a way that requires you to have multiple six figures, if not seven figures, to receive true financial counseling. And that's not something that, that myself or my firm believes in. Uh, we believe in no family left behind. We believe that everyone deserves at a base level of financial education and an opportunity for success. So as you learned, there is absolutely no fee to work with me. Um, you can pass me. I pay that. nothing. Yeah. You can, <laughs> you can, you well, can I pay a little me. bit on to my policies, but I pay nothing yeah. out of my pocket. <laughs> yeah, not, 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 you will never stroke a $3,000 check to me for me to sit down and evaluate a statement or for you to go through a plan with me. Um, not what we do, not what we believe in. Uh, the majority of financial industry does believe that. They believe that you know, it, and it's really a way of filtering out people who are not serious. Um, so they put a $3,000, $3,500 barrier up and say, hey, um, you know, pay me this. And, and that lets me know you're serious for working with me. And, and so, you know, that money goes directly in the advisor's pocket. It doesn't go anywhere else. It goes right in the advisor's pocket. So, um, you know, if I, if I have 10 people that do that, I just made $35,000 a year. So right. that's how that works. So uh, not what we do here. So I, I am truly about financial literacy. I have found that I've had the most fun. I've I've had the best clients when we start with that foot first and talking about financial literacy and financial education. So that's a little bit about me and and my background and, and, you know, we'll get into some other stuff here in a minute. (laughs) Listen, I'm, I'm loving the people that I speak to because as you guys are speaking, I can foresee two, three, four other shows just out of your introduction alone. Oh, so man. That says you're coming back. Um, All right, you got to talk to my agent about that, but, I, but I, I'm okay with that. I'm good with the agent, so we're good. <laughs> um, That's what's up. Do know now uh, that there are more options with people that make below sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's, it's starting out small. If that's all you have, and you know someone like I mean I was I met you at a networking event, yep. um, and I was still kind of standoff. It's like yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I don't fall in the category because I knew what I had went through. I had just lost my job, lost everything that I, you know what I mean. So I didn't really have any kind of footing, or or I hadn't even. I felt like I didn't save enough. Um, yeah. But you just deciding to have a conversation, knowing I wanted to do better, knowing, and it's not like, you know, my mom, she's, she's done pretty well for herself. You know, she's worked all her life, but she's, she invested, she invested well, she took options. She did a whole bunch of things and it worked for her, but I was like, well, dang, but I'm not making what she's making. So how do I get to that level? You play the long, to me, you play the long game, you know? Mm and again, like I said, start off small and start out with the basics, start out with what you can know. And that's what you helped me understand. You helped me to break that barrier to be like, Nicole, if all you have is $100 today, then that's, that's what you have and let's work with it, you know? Um, so what I would love is to walk us through one of the first things that we should know in financial literacy. Okay. So um, let's, let's begin here. So you know, one of the things, and, and I'm going to even go sub-zero on you, you know what I mean? I know you want to start do. ground zero and go sub-zero. You, you know want to I mean? get to the, the belly of the beast, son. You know what I'm saying? We got to find bedrock first, right? So <laughs> um, so here's what happens is the, the first thing that, that you have to do as a person is, you know, 
treat a financial advisor as if you were, you were looking for, um, it's going to sound weird, but looking for someone to date or almost someone that you would match with, right? Because to be honest with you, like you're not going to come into my office and I'm going to write something up for you and then I'll never see you again. Technically speaking, we get married for the next 20, 30 years. You know, that's, that's my approach when I sit down with someone and, and I'm instituting a plan. Mm-hmm. Yo, I'm, I'm going to be there, you know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now to bring that plan to, you know, full completion. And so we got to get along. And, and it, it just so happened that you and I had a great vibe. You know what I mean? We're both from up north. You're from New York. I'm from Chicago, you know, and, and, and so we had that we had that thing going on. Um, you know, we had sarcasm going on. And, and, and so, you know, we, we, we culturally speaking, we just kind of hit it off. So it made sense for us to work together. So I would tell you the first thing you got to do is, is find an advisor who um, doesn't just, you know, check the boxes on paper as far as credentials. But, you know, if I could tell you the amount of times I've had clients call me up and, and um, you know, they just needed to vent about something that was, you know, uh, frustrating them financially, or they were needing to make a major decision and had absolutely nothing to do with our business. Right. that we were doing together, but I'm that center of influence in your life. I'm that, that grounding, you know, voice of reason when it comes to money and finance. And so I've had conversations with clients about, Hey, you know what? I just lost my job due to COVID-19 or my son just lost his job due to COVID-19 and he just bought a car. What do we do? We're thinking about just giving the car back and doing a voluntary refund. I was like, ah, you know, Let's, let's, let me walk you through that. Let me tell you what, what my experience is over the last 15 years telling me is possible. Go do this first and then come back and, and, you know, stuff like that. You know, um, you know, my God, primary breadwinner lost the job and we have this mortgage and, and how do we handle things? I don't deal in mortgages, but I have experiences having worked for a big bank for big credit union for a couple of years. So, you know, I knew the questions to ask or the departments to send you to, 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 to get some, some information. And so, you know, working with someone who's going to vibe with you, that's going to look out for you, I think is step one, because if, and it goes into trust. Goes so into trust. if I can't vibe with you, then I probably can't trust you. And if I can't trust you, I'm not giving you a dollar. So, you know, we, we've got to have that connection there. It's not always going to be, you know, we're, we're chums, we're pals, but we do have to have some type of, um, you know, serviceable relationship where you can pick up the phone and call me and it's not just all business. You know, I guess in, in the medical field, you call it bedside manner. You know, right. we've got to have some type of financial bedside rapport going for us to be able to work together. That's step one for me. Step two, which I think is um, so vitally important, and you got a copy of this, and, and that's, you got to get this book in your hands. And this book, um, which is called How Money Works, Stop Being a Sucker, written by um, the co-founder of, my, of our firm, a guy by the name of Tom Matthews, and one of the foremost mental toughness trainers on the planet. Uh, who also works with us, his name's Steve Siebold. And um, you got to get that in your hands because what we believe is a great financial plan begins with a financial education, period, point blank. Yes. And so the, the path to enlightenment begins with understanding what you don't know, right? You know, it's know what you know, know what you don't know, and who know who knows what you don't know. Yes. And that's all you need to know. Right. And if you can master that, all of a sudden, things are going to start to change for you. You're, you're, you know, each the light bulb is going to start to come on for you in, in the room that you're sitting in. You're going to start realizing, oh, I need to clean this up. I didn't realize it was so dirty in here. I didn't realize it was so dank in here. It was so musty in here, right? We got to get this going. So financial education, um, you know, you got to get this book in your hands. And, and so here, here's something for your listeners or watchers is if you connect with me on my website, Um, Or you can go to Facebook.com or LinkedIn. And on Facebook, you want to look for Sean D. Drake, investment advisor, representative, financial advisor, um, you know, entrepreneur. If you if you look for me there and connect with me there and send me a message, I will send this book to you for free. Right. Or if you go to my website and, you know, my contact information is there, whether it's an email or a phone call. If you connect with me there, I will send you a copy of this book, right? So you don't have to pay for it. It's 18 bucks on Amazon. So wow. keep your 18 bucks in your pocket. I'll send one to you, right? Look at that. I'm already give, having giveaways. That's what I'm talking about. That's how, <laughs> how we're healing up in here. And I will say this book, 
was one of the best, and I love reading books. This was one of the best books uh, I've read in a while. It was a page turner. It was funny. It was simplistic enough for you to understand. And I, was, I had a joy reading it. I just kept on going. And normally I was to open a book and it takes me a minute. I think I read half the book in like one day. That's, and I mean, it has these illustrations in there where there's actually yeah. people and there's live um, uh, situations. They are breaking it down like I've never heard, I've never seen before. So yeah. please, you have nothing to lose. Go get the book. I have it. I love it. Um, and it, it, I will definitely, like I said earlier, we gonna have, this is going to be a very blunt conversation. Yeah, it kind of hit me in the gut in some areas. <laughs> it, it did. And I was like, yeah, Sean. But, and it was a good way because I was, I started talking about it and helped me thinking a little bit different, differently. I'm still learning, but I knew that I had made some mistakes. And it's okay yep. because that's what life we is. Have. We're going to make mistakes. And the areas where I beat myself up the most, this book addressed it, mm -hmm. made me face it. And I was able to be like, okay, Nicole, yeah, you're not, you're not where you were, but you're doing something now. You're building now. And it doesn't matter. I mean, there's people in here from their 20s up to like their 70s, the illustration is. And so yeah. it's showing at every level, there's something you can do today with the right person with the right tools with the right education so i was happy about the book and i was like okay but yeah it's this book was it's, it's absolutely amazing it's one of those things that you would want to uh read and pass on absolutely. and or tell them to get their own book absolutely um, definitely i got to give a, a shout out to the uh, illustrator of the book is a uh, gentleman by the name of andy horner who uh is up in uh, john's creek with tom and steve and uh, this has been their brainchild for the better part of, you know, at least 24 months. Wow. And, and uh, you know. They thought about, every, they thought about everything. They yeah. really, really did. Um, you, I, you've I, got the first edition there that's only sold about 125,000 copies. Um, we're up over half a million copies sold and distributed of this book and growing. And so it is, um, it's incredible. It is it definitely is, an incredible book. And, you know, you touched on something that is, um, you know, very important, which is, you know, the financial world has always painted the picture that you've got to be this super smart, super together person to get your money together. And that's just so not true. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is it's messy. You know, it, it is very messy when it comes to money and finances. And so you have to be willing to get messy. You know, everybody likes a garden that's blooming, but nobody remembers when you had to come and till the ground and, 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 and put the soil and get your fingers dirty and all that stuff. Building a financial plan is the same way. It's, it's, it's dirty, it's ugly, it's messy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But once we get things organized, all of a sudden, um, you know, you just pour a little water on it, all of a sudden it starts to grow. It does. Um, and I, I will say it, 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 it's grown for me. I can look at my accounts and I'm like, you know, I'm looking, <laughs> when I started, I just put $100 in my account. And, you know, Sean jokes with me all, uh, all the time. And I'm like, ugh. But now I'm doing a little bit better. Much um, better, and much it, better. And it was like, okay, just whatever you can for a month, whether it's twenty dollars, whether it was forty dollars a month, put in money that you can't see, you know, that you're not gonna miss. You're not gonna miss it because guess what? If you don't put it there, it's gonna go someplace else. So why not let your money work for you? Absolutely. Um, and I'm uh, and so having that piece of information, I'm more cognizant now. Um, I'm looking at any extra money, as you've known. You know, I've mm -hmm. decided to do other you know, other multiple streams of income, uh, I just throw the money there. I'm not even, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm put like this, I'm very thankful that I'm able to do that, you yeah. know? Um, so I'm like, yeah, you, you, I feel like I'm building that fine, that uh, emergency fund that I've never had, even when I was making much more than I'm making right now. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it feels, it feels very good. You feel achieved and like I said, you want to talk to someone like Sean. He can talk to you from any, any, anywhere in the country, um, and get these, get these tools. Get you know, get that those, that baseline together. Get those. Then talk about you know policies. You know your your life insurance, which is super important. Um, build that legacy, which is what I feel like I am. Poss I'm doing right now. Absolutely. You know, 
or you know my niece and I'm, it's going to be very blunt so people might be offended but i don't care so culturally um <laughs> yeah, we're, we we go. gonna go there we gonna go there we go. Here we go. Because okay. well, you, you see the plight of cultures, right? Black people. Um, yeah. We didn't have, we didn't have, we, we knew a lot. And it's so fun. I'm watching all these documentaries about how much we had, how much we were able to build together, blah, blah, blah. And I just kind of went to hell in a handbasket. But not every family had that wherewithal, right? So we don't know what to do. We just know we just need to be able to have some life insurance to put us in the grave. Yeah. We don't know that there's life insurances that you can build legacy, leave for your family, that, but still actually grows while you're still living, you know? Um, and when I came to Sean, I was asking him, okay, what, what policies do I need? I think that was my exact words. What policies do mm -hmm. I need? And he said to me, he said, okay, do you want to do it the black people way? Or <laughs> do you want to do it? You know, it's like, okay, what well, I need, I need to know the right way to do this. You feel All me? All right. I need, to, right. I need to know the right way to do this, the best way to do this. Because again, right. we don't have all this information. I was right. looking at something for my niece. You know, people, we know about the 529s. We know about all of those other things. But there's other vehicles, there's other products yeah. out there that can help us. And he helped me figure out something that was within my budget, mm -hmm. that I was covering myself, I was covering whoever. And I'm like, I don't feel the pinch. And the earlier you start with those things, the yeah. better. I'm 42, right? Yeah, I'm 42. I felt like I was behind the eight ball, but I, I was, but I'm not because, right, and right. right. So I, I felt right. like I was, because I know like, goodness, if I knew then what I know now, I'd right. have had this at 20 years old. Correct, correct. So let me let me interject a couple of things here for you, because um, you, you've touched on a couple of key points that I think are absolutely amazing. And so the first thing is, um, you know, when you talk about saving, um, it's a habit, right? So we all have habits that, that we have on a daily basis, right? You get up, you wash your face, you brush your teeth, you make up the bed, right? You get dressed. Those are all just habits, right? Well, you know. My bed's not made right now. Not my lane, not my lane, right? <laughs> Um, but you know, these are, these are all habits, even not making the bed is a habit. Right. And so, you know, I'm going to get something to eat. Some people say I can't function without my coffee. Right. That's a habit. Right. And so, you know, if, if you look at where your life is, it is really a series of habits that, that take you through instinctually every day, you know, even from the moment you get in your car, like, you know, when we were driving everywhere every day, right. right. If you drive, if you get in your car, if you start daydreaming, and and you're driving somewhere you ever notice all of a sudden you start driving to work right because you're you that muscle memory that muscle memory kicks in right the reticular activator kicks in and all of a sudden you're like why am i going this way and it's like that's because i was daydreaming just now and, and you know my mind just took over and said oh well, we when we come this way we normally make a left so let's make a left right and next thing you know you're up on the expressway driving to work right so saving is a habit the hardest thing that i have to do in the very beginning is get you just in the habit which is why I, I try to tell you, and I told you specifically, I said, it doesn't matter the amount. It doesn't matter if it's 10 bucks, doesn't matter if it's 20 bucks or hundred, doesn't matter. Just put something every month, just, just do it. Because what will happen is, and, and this is what I know to be true, is if you give me enough time, that balance is gonna start to grow. And, you know, it's unimpressive when you start with, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100, and you just, it's 100 hours. Right. And uh, you know what? I really like those shoes or man, you know, I really wanted to go on that vacation or I really want to go eat, whatever. I, I could just, no, no, leave it there. Right. And so we go six months and all of a sudden it's $600 and you've never had $600 before. And we go another six months and it's $1,500 because now we've had some interest kick in and some dividends kick in and you go, I've never had $1,500 before. And now those two things are at conflict, right? And, and that, that desire to want to grab it and touch it is now at conflict with, I want to see that thing earn and grow. And so now the two things are fighting. And so all of a sudden, the, a new habit is forming and that new habit shrinks the old habit away. And then you look up, now we're 24 months in, because 24 months is going to go by anyway, right? We're 24 months in and there's several G's, G's in there. And you're sitting here going, 
is that why my attitude is different? Is that why I don't give a damn about what this dude is saying over here at this job? Because I know I could, I, I've got three months or six months worth of disposable income on hand that if I need to go find something else, I can real quick and not worry about it. And so now all of a sudden, you know, your, your psyche changes, your, your physical changes because you're not stressed out about basic day-to-day -day things. You know, it's said in the book that most Americans cannot cover a $400 emergency if it were to happen. Right. Mm. And, Ooh, that, and that got me. Cause at the time I was like, I, 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 when I read that part, I was like, I've been there. Right. Thank you God. Know. I'm not there right now. Like I can cover $400 right now without Correct. like, thank and, God and I can like, do that. Oh, I got, oh, Oh, it's a flat tire. That's it. Oh, pff, I got it. Right. And then all of a sudden. And so now that self-confidence starts to come because you're not beating yourself up about past decisions, past things that you've done. You know what I mean? Now it's like oh, the decision I made to save this money has now come to rescue me. Right. And, and it's a minor car repair or, you know, it's an emergency where, you know, you know, here in Florida, we get hurricanes. I, need, I needed to go out and buy water and supplies. I didn't have to wait for my check like everybody else did. I, could, I just went to the store and got what I needed and came back, right? COVID-19, same thing. You know, I went out and stocked up on, you know, food and supplies and cleaning stuff because we didn't know, you know, we were unsure. And so, you know, that's where a little bit of hoarding comes in, a little bit of, of impulse buying comes in. But at the same time, great feeling saying, you know what, Pfft, let me make this quick emergency fund transfer over to my checking account real quick. Boom, blam. I'm about to go get what I need to get. And I'm not even worried about it because I don't have to worry about it. Right. So that was, that's the first thing. It's a habit. You have to give the habit time to develop and take hold. Once that habit takes hold, all of a sudden different ball game. Right now, once I got you in that space where you're like, dude, I like this. You know, this feels great. What do I do next? And now we come to the conversation about life insurance, right? And so I'm going to be very blunt because um, you know that's how I am. And um, straight no chaser. No, straight no chaser, man. You know what I mean? Um, so th this, is a, this is a topic near and dear to my heart. And, and the reason being is because I am a... Um, Third, gener third generation immigrant to the United States, okay? Um, from wow. Jamaica, born in Jamaica, right? I moved to the States when I was one, right? Um, my mom, second generation. My grandmother, first generation, right? And so all of these people, we came here for better life, better living, right? Some of the hardest working people that I've ever known are my family members. My grandfather would wake up every day at four o'clock in the morning. He worked in the hospitality industry and he woke up at four o'clock every morning. Didn't matter how much he went out and drank the night before, partied the night before, my grandfather, right? Didn't matter what he did. Four o'clock in the morning, he's up, he's getting ready and he went to work. Okay. And he did that for years and he did well for himself. But my grandfather died without a elementary school or high school education, right? And made a incredible name for himself in the hospitality industry, both here in the United States and in Jamaica. Incredibly hard worker. My grandmother, same thing, incredibly hard worker. My mom, that generation, now starts the generation of seeking post-secondary education, right? So my aunt was the first person in our family to graduate from college with a degree, okay? And then, you know, followed by my mom and myself, right? And so, you know, now we start breaking into, you, you break out of a socioeconomic status of earning somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of twenty-five dollars to $35,000 a year. Now, post-secondary education in a major urban center like Atlanta, like Chicago, like New York, you're going to start breaking north of 50, 60 grand a year, right? And so when that happened, Okay. I'm talking about they're working for major banks. They're working for major law firms. They're working for all of these, these big name, large organizations. Not one person came and sat down with them and talked to them about the power of leveraging life insurance, the power of compound interest, the time value of money, and what it takes to be truly wealthy in the United States. See, immigrants come to this country because they want to make more money and they want a better living right? But no one ever talks to them about the true wealth and how to become wealthy in this country. 
How do you do that? You have to leverage life insurance to become wealthy in the United States, right? So the question I posed to Nicole when she came to me, and I'll never forget this day, we're sitting in my office, and she's all excited. She's like, oh, Drake, I've been doing this. I got to get this going. I need, I need some life insurance. You know, I'm getting older. You know, come on, Sean. I need, I need some life insurance, right? And I looked at her, and, I, and, I, and without hesitation, I said, do you want to do this how the wealthy people do it, or do you want to do it how black people do it? Exactly. And that caught her completely off guard. She was like, what? What are you talking about? I said, do you want to do it how wealthy people do it? you want to do it how white folks do it? Or do you want to do it how black people do it? And she says, well, how do white people do it? I'm curious. And it's actually also laid out in this book, a little piece of what they do. There's a concept in here called the million dollar baby. All right. Today's child is tomorrow's millionaire. All right. Here's how wealthy people do it. When a child is born into an affluent family, not even necessarily a super wealthy affluent family, just a family with means, a family with understanding of how money works. The child is born, multiple things happen. The first thing that happens is they purchase a life insurance policy on the child, right? Now, most people listening to this are probably going, why the hell would I buy life insurance on a child, right? I think that's and, what I said. And here's the answer. Death runs in your family. It runs in everybody's family. There is not one person today that can sit here and tell me that their great, great, great grandparents are still alive or their great, great grandparents are still alive right? You're lucky if your great grandparents are still alive, right? At our age, right? You're, yeah. If you're between 30 and 50, the odds are your great grandparents have gone on already and probably your grandparents have gone on already, right? Yeah. And so, you know, even some of us, our parents have gone on already or started to go on, right? Mm -hmm. And so death runs in your family. So you are the healthiest, typically speaking, you are the healthiest the moment you come out of your mom's womb, right? You are, you'll never be younger, right? Which insurance is based on age, right? You'll never be younger, you'll never be healthier. And so when a child is born, an affluent family places a life insurance policy on that child, typically somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter of a million dollars. A quarter of a million dollars on a child? A child. Why? It's pennies. You're probably talking 50, 60, 70 bucks to do it when a child's born right? But grandma and grandpa see the benefits. So what they do is they pay for it. Or even mom and dad, they pay for it, right? And so they're, they're kicking out that, that 50, 60, 75 dollars a month on the child, okay? What happens? That child's going to grow up to be 18. The child's going to grow up to be 25, 35, 45, right? And, and if I waited until I was 35, 45, 50 to do it, now all of a sudden that little 50, 60, 75 dollars may cost me two, three, four hundred dollars, right? Plus, I haven't had that 25 years of accumulation on that insurance policy, right? So that's the first thing they do. The other thing that, that a lot of um, affluent parents are doing right now, and again, it's laid out in this book, is um, the Million Dollar Baby concept is based around opening a very specific trust in the child's name. And you're opening that trust in the child's name, and then we are going to use another financial vehicle where we can front load it with cash. So, you know, everybody wants to buy the kid toys, everybody wants to buy the kid shoes and all these things that they play with for two months. You ever notice kids play with the boxes, never play with the toys, exactly. right? You lay out a hundred toys on the ground and the kid runs in the kitchen and plays with the pots and pans, right? Or the UPS package or the FedEx box, right? Whatever, they don't play with the toys, not for very long, okay? And you end up having a garage sale or giving away to your friends that have kids because the kids didn't play with them for very long. Meanwhile, thousands of dollars are tied up in all of these clothes and shoes and toys and all this stuff, right? Well, what if, I'm not saying don't do that for your kid, but what if we took just, instead of all of that, we took a percentage of that money that was spent and we stuck it into a vehicle that was wrapped underneath this trust and we let it sit there for a specified amount of time. I don't know, 60 years. That child wakes up at 60 with you having done something when they were born, right? We pooled our resources together. We pooled together, um, we pooled together um, money from the grandparents, money from the parents, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the best friends that said, I don't know what to get them. Hey, I got a special, I got a trust set up. We have an account set up. 
why don't you make a, a gift deposit here into this account? And we're gonna have we're gonna have a stop off at age 18 when they go to college if that's what they want to do. We're gonna we're gonna distribute some to help pay for college. Now what are we doing? We're shrinking that student loan debt. We're we're eliminating that student loan burden, which is trillions of dollars in the United yeah. States right now. Right. But a matter of fact, the reason people are unable to retire on time and with dignity is because of the student loan crisis in this country. That's number one. But then we're going to have the rest of this money that's going to keep growing over time, time value of money, time value of money. It's going to keep going. And now all of a sudden that child wakes up at 55 or 60 years old, unbeknownst to them because it's sitting in a trust, right? And your family has done something that has turned into millions of dollars, done right, millions of dollars, right? Yeah. Now think about that. That's what a lot. If you woke up that's, that's at, a lot. That's a whole lot of money. That's what if you woke up? At, at 60 and you know all of a sudden you get a letter in the mail from the trust that says we've been waiting for this day for 60 years <laughs> your grandparents started this when you were born and here's the trustees have been overseeing this account have been managing this account have been making sure that this account is doing what it's supposed to do for you remember that car that you that you got at, at 18 when you graduated with honors that came from this account. Remember when you went to college and, and the scholarship didn't cover everything and you still needed money for books and labs and all that stuff? Well, guess what? This covered it, right? Remember that, that house that you wanted a down payment on and, and magically the money came, right? This is what that came from, right? And now all of a sudden at 60, you know, 55 or 60, you're tired. I don't want to work anymore. You, maybe you've done all right. Maybe you haven't done all right. And all of a sudden at 60, you could say, hey, you know what? You made it here. You're a good person. Here's $2 million. Here's $3 million because we did a good job managing this account. How freaking awesome is that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. To be able to do that for your family. You know, when we start talking about the village and yeah, take a village. That's what I loved about that whole process was like, yeah, that was the new age of it takes a village to raise the child. That, that's, that's, what what the, that's what the policy should be called. Um, on, <laughs> that's what it should be called because that's what it literally is. And, and one other thing, that's in addition to everything else that you're going to do throughout life. Right. So you're, you're going to have your own personal savings. You're going to have something through your, your employer, a 401k, a 403b, a 457, all, all the acronyms, right, that we fall in love with. And we think we're doing something big. We're really not, right? You're still going to have that, right? But here's the thing. Before we move off of this topic, here's the other thing that affluent families do that, that, that other cultures don't do. If it were me and I were you right now, I would be trying to put life insurance on my living parents, right? Mom, dad, grandparents, whatever the case may be. I have a question on yep. that note. Uh, you're saying if your parents don't have a life insurance. Would, I wouldn't care if they had it or not. I'd be trying to write one for them for me, right? Why? So, so if, mom, if, go ahead, talk about mom why. and dad have an insurance policy. They probably had it for years, right? And it's and it's if they've if they've gone through a financial plan, a state plan, a whole nine, and it's earmarked to do certain things fantastic right but then i would be going out and saying hey mom dad you know what uh, i know you got your thing going on but this is about legacy for me so what if i got you qualified for an insurance policy and i pay for it right when you pass away here is another hundred two hundred three hundred thousand dollars that comes out federally tax-free because in life insurance premiums come out tax-free right what if i did that and, and would you be okay with that? If you're paying for it, who cares, right? <laughs> and, so, and so within your budget, right, you know, you, you find a suitable answer. And mom and dad go, they take care of themselves, they've been going to the doctor, right, the whole nine yards, and they get qualified, and you can write them a quarter of a million dollar insurance policy. And let's say it costs you a couple hundred dollars a month. So what, right? People fall in love with the stock market and they say, you know, I got a couple hundred dollars a month. I want to, I want to go on these websites and I'm going to buy these stocks. I'm going to do all this stuff. And I say, you know what I would do? I would go buy life insurance on some of my living family members. All right. Especially the parents. Because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we want to be careful. <laughs> runs in your family. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, and so, you know, mom is 60, 65 years old. 
right? And, and history says she's probably going to live another, you know, 30 years. If it costs me $200 a month, so that's $2,400 a year. So I'm putting $75,000, right? When you start thinking about these numbers, I'm putting right. $75,000 out, right? Over a 30 year period. But I have coming to me when she passes away, you know, a quarter of a million dollar insurance policy. What return on investment is that? That is an incredible return on investment. Yeah. Right. So I'd rather do that before I even thought about doing some silly investment on the side. Yeah, you got your 401k. You're going to have all that. We're going to have to but, talk about that. <laughs> but now I've got my mom passes away whenever. Hopefully it's much later than sooner. Right. right. But here is quarter million that comes to me federally tax free. What does that now do for you? Mm -hmm. Right. Any debt I have, you can erase it. Right. If I have kids now, I can fully fund some of those vehicles I just mentioned before. Right. Now we can start building true legacy wealth because wow. what, what can I then do? Right. I've paid off all my debts and maybe I paid off my house. Maybe not. Right. But then what if I took the same thing and I, and I increased the insurance policy I had on myself? So I have a quarter million down, but I just inherited a quarter million, right? What if I went back to the insurance company and said, you know what, can you increase mine to half a million and I can kind of front load it with some cash, right? I just got some cash from this inheritance. Why don't I front load this on, on some cash that pay for itself, right? And I can fund some of these other vehicles. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put a bigger policy on the kids, right? I had a quarter million, they're now older. Maybe I'll put half a million on them. Now you pass away, right? Again, much later than sooner, but you pass away. And here's half a million that comes to your kids. Mm. And now all of a sudden, what happens? They're debt free because you were debt free. Your parents' financial plan is your financial plan. If you're debt free, the chances are your kids are going to be debt free. The house is paid for. I paid it off with the proceeds from what I got for when mom passed away, right? So now here's a house if you want it. Do what you want with it. Sell it, keep it. I don't care, right? Now here's half a million that comes tax free to you. But I'm bringing them along in the process so they know what to do. Well, you know what? Mom had half a million on us. We just in inherited half a million. What if we went to the insurance company and we increased our policies from half a million to a million? Wow. And now three generations down, there's multiple millions of dollars yeah. that's circulating in tax-free money, right? Mm -hmm. We can spend our time worrying about reparations or we can leverage the tools that we have right now to structure millions of dollars in wealth transfer in this country, right? Now, that's how the wealthy people do it, right? You know how black people do it? You wanna know? Yeah, tell me how. Black people don't do a goddamn thing, all right? <laughs> we sit back and talk about it, and we philosophize about it, right? We march in the streets about it, and I, I have nothing against the protests. I think they're needed, right? We, we, we get all angry, we get all in a tissy and all this stuff, Right. But you know what? When things cool down and things start to die down, there's going to be a very small percentage of people that remember. Right. There's going to be a very small percentage of people that, that decide to direct their dollars in a different manner, in a different direction. There's going to be a very small percentage of, of people who hear my words and, and actually go and restructure their financial plans. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so everybody else is going to go right back to, you know, oh, man, tax returns. I can't wait for my tax return. Right. Oh man, they sent another stimulus check, right? So, so they're gonna they're gonna go right back into that mode, and and you know it's very sad and it's very unfortunate, but it's the reason why we get duped into doing so many things because we're worried about you know the wrong things per se. So exactly, that's why. On I that note, you have given us a lot to think about. Um, we're gonna have a separate conversation. Because uh, we got some other things. To I, need I need something else now. Um, this was a very, very enlightening conversation. A lot yeah. of this I already knew because I, I, you're my guy. Uh, but yeah. then there's some that on the tail end of this, I did not know that I mm -hmm. should or could do. I've, I've known about it, but uh, like why? But you just explained why. So you're going to come back. Um, I'll be back. We're going to come back because this conversation, we need part two, three, four, five, six, however long it takes to help. Absolutely. 
understand the long game. We have to play the long game, people, and be okay and not need that instant gratification all the time. This is how you heal financially. I hope you take the journey with me. I thank you so much for tuning in. And as I always like to say, good morning. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.